Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will learn about the non-deterministic context-free grammars. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, we will first observe the different classifications of context-free grammars. Thereafter, we will acquire the understanding of non-determinism. Finally, we will learn the left factoring procedure. We already have seen different types of context-free grammars so far. If you remember, during this journey of learning about context-free grammars, we first came to know about the ambiguous CFGs and the unambiguous CFGs. Except the operator precedence parser, all the other parser need unambiguous grammars. Due to ambiguity, we face violation of associativity and precedence properties. The next classification of context-free grammars that we observed is the left recursive CFGs and the right recursive CFGs. We have learned that top-down parsers accept right recursive CFGs. So far, we have observed these four types of context-free grammars and we have also learned how to convert ambiguous CFGs to unambiguous CFGs and how left recursive CFGs can be transformed into right recursive CFGs. Now, apart from these two types of categories, CFGs can be classified even further. Non-deterministic CFGs and deterministic CFGs. Today, we will learn about this classification. Let me illustrate what are the non-deterministic CFGs. Non-deterministic context-free grammars are of the form a can be rewritten as alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 or alpha followed by beta 3. Although it is represented like this, but we know these are three separate production rules. If we think about it from a state machine's perspective, it can be stated that from a state A, we can reach any of these states beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 seeing the symbol alpha. Let's now observe how the top-down parsers would derive the string alpha beta 3. Since all the rules state that they accept alpha, so the machine starting from the start symbol A would naturally choose the first rule and derive alpha first, then it would derive beta 1. Basically, from the state A, saying this alpha, the machine would reach the state beta 1. Now, during the traversal, when the machine would reach here, that is beta 1, it would understand that this is not the desired derivation. So, it will backtrack to A. Next, the machine would select the second rule and the machine would derive alpha again. Thereafter, it would derive beta 2. This time, seeing this alpha, the machine ended up in this state. While fetching the yield, when the machine reaches here, it would realize that this again is not the correct derivation. So, the top-down parser would again backtrack to A. Finally, using the third production, the machine would derive alpha once more and then it would derive beta 3. So, now when the machine reaches this beta 3, it would realize that the correct production rule has been chosen and the intended string that is alpha followed by beta 3 has been generated. Now, to derive this string, the parser has to perform backtracking more than once. This happened due to the common prefixes. Observe, all the productions have the same prefix. This is the concept behind non-determinism. And due to this common prefix problem, top-down parsers have to withstand an awful lot of backtracking. So, the main reason behind backtracking is that the machine is choosing the production rule without examining it completely. Just by seeing the alpha, the production rules are being selected. So, we need to eliminate this non-determinism. We will now modify our production rules accordingly. So, from the start symbol A, we will generate the leftmost common portion of the right-hand sides, that is, these alpha, which will be followed by a new non-terminal A prime. Then A prime will be rewritten as either beta 1 or beta 2 or beta 3. See, 
Now it has transformed into a deterministic context-free grammar. To achieve this, we basically factored out the leftmost common prefixes of every production, didn't we? This is why this method is known as left factoring. So do always remember this that top-down parsers tend to suffer from non-deterministic CFGs as they lead to backtracking. Therefore, using the left factoring procedure, we need to eliminate the non-determinism. So in this session, we saw all the different classifications of the CFGs. Remember, there are three types of classifications of CFGs, ambiguous and unambiguous, left and right recursive, and non-deterministic and deterministic CFGs. Then we understood the concept of non-determinism and the problem, that is the common prefix problem, which causes backtracking for top-down parsers. Finally, we learned the left factoring procedure using which we can convert a non-deterministic grammar into its equivalent deterministic form. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next couple of sessions, we will see some solved problems on elimination of non-determinism. So I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.